Hey everybody, Austin back again. Today we're going to be playing Maldita Castilla. I think that's how it's pronounced. For the, uh, the Ouya. Now this is a, a free game that came out in 2012 on the PC. I'm not sure when the Ouya version came out. Is the Ouya two years old yet? I have no idea. I haven't really been keeping up with it that much until I bought it, uh, two weeks ago. So, again, this is a, a quick series of Ouya yeah, Let's Plays, and I should be doing at least one more of these uh, uploaded within the next couple of days, most likely. Uh, but this one here, again, is Maldita Castilla. I believe it's a Spanish-developed game and a Spanish-themed... I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't speak Spanish, so... Um, yeah, this is an awesome homage to Ghosts and Goblins and Ghouls and Ghosts. It really is, like... If this game had the Ghouls and Ghosts label on it, I would totally buy the fact that it's a Ghouls and Ghosts game. It's that good. Uh, and I highly, highly recommend you check this game out if you're a fan of those games. If you don't have an Ouya, uh, check the Android store. It might be on there because, again, the Ouya is just an Android-based console. Um, and if it's not there, uh, get it on the PC. Get it on the PC anyway. It's free. It's, you can, you know, play it with a keyboard. I don't, you might be able to plug a controller up and do it that way, or if not, just use x pattern or something like that. And play it like that. Uh, actually, that's probably the best way to play it, because uh, it's not worth buying an Ouya just for this game. But if you have an Ouya, this is a must-buy, assuming you like Ghosts and Goblins and those difficult kind of games. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. This game's probably going to take about an hour, hour and a half to beat, assuming I don't die that much. I will die. Uh, there's no getting through this game without dying, even though there is an achievement for it at the end of the game If you get the good ending it does tell you like go through the game without dying get all these special items that you'll probably never find and Do it all without you know uh, Save states or anything like that because there's no uh, Saving in this game you have to beat the game from start to finish uh, fresh so Let me go ahead and hit this and change my controls. I do like having a square being my attack there we go, and then X is my jump. So, you know, just like uh, Ghosts and Goblins, you start off with this sort of lance type of weapon, and you can shoot up and down just like in the original Arcade Ghouls and Ghosts. And, yeah, if you guys are a fan of those games, you can probably already tell the similarities. And, yeah, this is going to be really tricky trying to talk and play <laughs> at the same time. Especially with all these bright lights in my face. I've got lamps like littered all over my room trying to keep this well lit and I, I'm definitely not used to playing this game. It's such a well lit scenario. So here we've got weapons right here and you're gonna run into this a lot and you're gonna want to know what each weapon does. And what I'll try to do is just demonstrate each weapon. Um, my favorite is sort of, I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's the weapon that just goes out and comes right back to you. Like the scythe or something like that. And uh, the axe could be good because it's got this nice little arc, uh, or arch, arc, arch. I, I don't, I don't remember. Um, <laughs> and if you throw it up, it does indeed come back as well, which could be very handy. One of the problems though is that because it sort of arcs up like that, uh, it can go over certain enemies, or you'll be in like a, uh, a, you know, a tight corridor scenario, and the axe will hit the ceiling and won't go all the way, all the way across the screen because it'll disappear when it hits uh, solid objects. So... And what I'll do is I'll demonstrate all the weapons. The axe, generally I don't like using later on in the game. I prefer other weapons. Um, and this is a shield. This is uh, This goes in my secondary item slot in the uh, top part of the screen. And what the shield does, the shield's actually probably the best secondary item you can get in the game. Um, because it gives you a free extra hit. So, top left portion of the screen, you can see my health meter, and it, you can essentially only get three hearts. So you get three hits and then you're dead, but with the shield you can get four. And so that really comes into play uh, later on in the game. And one of the things I do like about the game is that you can see the health meter of every boss in the game, even the final boss. So you can sort of tell how quickly you're making progress against the enemies. And this is... well, I'll grab it go ahead just to demonstrate. Even though the shield's probably best... it's probably best to keep the shield for most of the game. Just to make life a little bit... Uh, not so much easier, but you're more likely to succeed having more health. 
or at least succeed with dying less because my goal is to not die all that much. I want to have as many chances as I have as at the final stage in the game. And there's going to be an extra life right here in this treasure chest. Uh, got it. So here is another weapon change. Let's go ahead and pick a different weapon so I can show you what they look like. This is the, the scythe I was telling you about where the sickle is very fast. Fastest weapon in the game. And if it loops past an enemy, it'll come back and hit them from behind, which is very, very useful. Okay, now there's actually another uh, gameplay gimmick we have to do in order to get the good ending. We have to find five tiers of Mora, and this is the first one right here, Mora's tier. Now if you look by the, uh, the time at the top, you can see that now I have one blue tier. And again, you have to get five of them, otherwise when you get to the first final boss in the game, um, it basically ends the game there. And you go back to the castle from the beginning and you get a game over. I won't spoil what happens because if you play this game for yourself, uh, I want you to see what happens and just... <laughs> it's cool. Um, and it's one of the things that you would never saw in the Ghosts and Goblins series. Is, is basically what happens in the bad ending of this game. So I thought it was really cool. And it definitely added incentive for replay value. You know, to get the best ending in the game. Oh... That was bad. Alright, uh, second boss technically, and I think it's our, our first primary boss. There's mini bosses, and then you've got your main bosses that actually end the level. Oops. That was bad. What I found through playing this game is, for one, it's an extremely difficult game, and I'm going to make this game look a lot easier than it is. Uh, it's a game that requires lots of discipline. Mm. Cheers. <laughs> and, um... It, it's a game that requires a lot of discipline and a lot of patience, and... You're really best off not rushing through the game. You're best off playing it with patience in mind. Um... So yeah, here's the start of level 2. There are six stages in the entire game, and they're all pretty decent sized. Uh, decently sized, sorry. I can't talk straight right now. What's new? Now these uh, guys, your, your comrades, will actually attack the harpies for you. And I think there's actually an achievement that you want to try to get if you're trying to get everything in the game. And I think that's what, what it says at the very end of the game. If we get the best ending, you'll see what I mean. And I think it says, like, be nice to the harpies or something like that. And I think that is on this level. Um, you can theoretically have your comrades do all the work. Because, uh, you know, you get the guy with the sword on the left. You got the guy with the big dude with the axe. And this should be our first, uh, nope, not yet. There is gonna be a boss here. And what I do recommend doing is just sort of staying towards the center. God, my nose keeps itching. Ah. I was doing fine in the last Ouya video. <laughs> and he's basically gonna dash right over you. And... Oops. One of the good things about having the fairy is that she shoots this projectile that sort of, you know, goes at a nice little angle. And what you can do is you can duck at a lot of parts in the game and just have your fairy do the attacking for you. It's a little bit slower, um, but as you can see, like, she can sort of... See, her shot just goes over and not above like that, so you can literally just let her attack. And I actually do do that intentionally on the final stage in the game, and you'll see what I mean once we get there. I should try to speed through this a little bit quicker, though, uh, instead of taking my time. Uh, those are boots. I'm going to go ahead and just not use the boots because the fairy is kind of good. It's a little bit of, uh, you know, extra firepower. The boots allow you to jump higher, which is definitely useful, but... Um, not as useful as it probably could be. So let's go ahead and get this last weapon that we haven't used yet. 
Oops, oh, why did I do that? <laughs> I picked up the same damn weapon I already had. Unfortunately, weapons do not power up, which I think is one of the downsides to the game. I think that's something they could have implemented, and it would have given uh, more incentive to just pick the same weapons up again. So that's our second Mora's tier. Uh, that's one of the tiers in the game that they just sort of hand to you. And I think there's one more that they sort of just give to you, but the other two are, are very, very well hidden. Or are there three? I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> so this part right here is very reminiscent of some Super Ghouls and Ghosts on the Super Nintendo. And you can definitely tell where they, they've just taken a lot of, uh, you know, great details from those other games. And I'm pretty sure there's like a special item here. And I'm going to go ahead and go for it. Let's go. Whoa, okay. You can't duck that one. <laughs> Never mind, we'll just skip it. I think it's just like points. There's a lot of hidden items uh, thrown throughout the game. Oh, no! God damn, I thought I was going to land on that. See, that's awful. Is uh, Losing lives in stupid manners like that. Because you really are going to need them. Oh, jeez, I got hit by that? You're really going to need your health. Uh, in your lives as the game progresses, because the game gets a lot more difficult as the game goes on. My nose is freaking itching, it's really annoying. Ugh. Am I like suddenly allergic to planters peanuts or something? Because that's the only thing I ate. That and month old. Starbursts. I'm, I'm sure they're probably still fine. It's just sugar. Um, <laughs> maybe I'm allergic to being up at 5 a.m. after having been sleeping for a while. I'm on my weekend from work, but technically I do work later today in about 14 hours. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually go back to sleep in about 5 hours. I'm going to hope I can go back to sleep. No! Fuck. That was totally stupid. Totally my fault. And I've already lost two lives in the damn game. Now, if you can play through the game without dying, theoretically you should have seven or eight lives when you get to the end of the game, but... I need to be playing much better. I need those lives by the end of the game. I mean, I'm going to have other uh, means of getting lives which is great. And you get continues. The problem with that is you have limited continues until you get a guaranteed bad ending as well. If you continue four times, you essentially get sucked up by death at the very end of the game. <laughs> and he'll actually tell you that. he if On your fourth continue, uh, he'll say you've continued four times. Continue at the cost of your soul. And so, when you actually beat the game, and get the, already to get the good ending, death will actually cancel things out and take your soul away. And you won't get to see the good ending. You will have fought the actual final boss and gone through all the trials and tribulations, but you won't get the good ending. So, this is a bonus stage here. What you want to do is uh, kill these guys as quickly as you can and grab as many items as you can, because they will drop an extra life. This is your extra life. Got it. You don't have very much time at all, so it's, it's over. So I only had a few seconds to get that extra life. And you have two seconds in the game to get those free extra lives, so I can get one more. And let's see if I can do this one without dying. <clears throat> I need some better weapons, though. Actually, the, the, the every weapon in this game is fine. And actually, the lance is probably... God, nose is itching. Lance is probably one of the better weapons in the game, actually, because it fires straight, it fires quickly, and, you know, there really aren't any problems with it. It's just, I do like some of the other weapons more. <laughs> Alright, what I'm going to recommend is going the top path first, because you've got some armored knight guys here. And if you let these guys go, they can be really annoying with their knife projectiles. And this is a weapon. 
Let's go ahead and pick the last weapon I haven't shown you guys. There you go. Ball and chain sort of things. I forgot the actual names for these things. And yeah, we get some points. I really like the music in this game. It's nothing really melodic or anything like that, but uh, uh, neither was Ghouls and Ghosts or Ghosts and Goblins. It was just very basic stuff, medieval sounding almost, and it just fit the mood and theme of the game. And Maldita Castilla is essentially the same way, and uh, it fits the game very, very well. And it's really uh, grown on me the more I play the game. It sounds like I'm playing a Sega Genesis or uh, an old arcade game that uses the Yama one of the Yamaha sound chips. Alright, so this is where we're gonna get our third tier. We have to grab this key. And you have to traverse your way back without dying. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. It's gonna be these spears that come out of the ground. And this is the trickiest one right here. Yeah. Usually I get a hit on that. It's a little tough. And just come down here. What I like to do is come over... Shit! I always do that by accident! That's an extra life right there. So... There's really no point in me going over there because the extra life is gone and I have full health. So... God, why don't I do that? See, there goes another chance to try to get through the whole game without continuing. Which I haven't done yet. Um, I, usually I have to continue at least once or twice when I play this game because... You know, like I said, it's a tough game, and you gotta do things just right. Just like Ghouls and Ghosts and Ghosts and Goblins, you gotta do things just right in those games. You can't just bolt through them and expect to complete them, like Ninja Gaiden. <laughs> um, so, it, it, the Ghosts and Goblins and Ghouls and Ghosts games, they, don't, they do not work like that. You have to know exactly what you're doing. So use the key on this door, destroy this guy. What I find funny about those skeleton guys is when you hit them, they make the exact same sound that's made in Castlevania when you destroy the bone pillars and when you attack the bone pillars, the NES Castlevanias. So if you listen carefully, you'll you'll notice that sound. And I don't know if they actually recreated the sound on the own or if they just took it from the game, but you'll notice uh, similar sounds. You'll notice similar sounds uh, taken from other arcade games as well. Like when you... Uh, I forgot when it happens, but there's also the sound of uh, the sword from Strider. You'll hear that in this game. So, you know, keep an, keep an ear out and you can hear sounds that are essentially in other uh, classic games. So this guy, you essentially just go underneath him at all times. And when he does this lunge is when you want to move forward and move underneath him. Which is generally speaking when he gets close to the other side of the screen. Like a lot of bosses in this game, he's not that difficult, it's just about knowing the pattern. If you don't know the pattern and you don't follow the pattern, that's when it can get extremely tricky. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is actually grab... oh. I was going to say grab the axe, but I, I guess uh, that was time instead. We might not get another weapon until we get to the top. Uh, you cannot attack when you're on these uh, ropes or chains. So if you want to try to attack these guys and you're on a rope or chain, you have to... Uh, jump backwards. Oh, whoa, that was a glitch. <laughs> Did you guys see that? I haven't seen that before. It's always funny running into some glitches. Uh, there was another glitch I, I, uh... Oh, yeah, there's a glitch I got to last time I played this game where I died had zero uh, hearts, but then I think lashed onto a rope as I was falling or something, and the game didn't count me as dying, so I had zero health and I was still playing the game. 
thought that was really interesting. That's only happened to me once. Alright, what have we got here? We got some weapons. We got an axe. What's the next boss? I'm gonna go ahead and go with this. Um... Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Um... There's a special book here, and I have no idea what it does, but I'll show you exactly where that is. It's right here. Let me kill these guys. And I think there are certain items you want to collect throughout the game as well. This isn't gar this isn't necessary to get the best ending in the game or anything like that. Um, there are sort of like side goals you want to go for um, after you've gotten the good ending once. And I don't know where all the items are. I have no idea. So, I'm not going to worry about going for them. This is the kind of... God damn it, man! This is the kind of level where you need to take your time because stupid, simple, small, tiny-ass mistakes like that will just burn you. No pun intended, because you just happen to be on a stage of fire, but you'll get burned pretty quickly if you're not very, very careful. And this Let's Play is a, a perfect demonstration of that. I, I wasn't intending on it to be that kind of demonstration. I wanted to get through the game uh, with much better, much greater success, because I've played this, I've beaten this game, I think, five or six times now. I played it quite a bit on the Ouya, and keep in mind, the first few times I played it, um, I died a lot. I mean, my first few playthroughs would take me up to upwards of two hours to beat the game. Uh, it's the kind of game you should be able to finish in about 40 minutes or so. And this level really isn't that difficult, it's just ducking at the right times, and that's it. Jump at the right time, duck at the right time. It's not rocket science. You don't have to really use your head that much, just be disciplined and patient, as I uh, described earlier on in the video. So this boss, you get away from the come back down, and that's when you can finally hit him and uh, take, some, take some life off. Come on, jump up. Thank you. I was getting the timing on that wrong. I should have been able to uh, hit him a few more times. Normally he's dead by now, but uh, I haven't been hitting him that much. Got axes, jump, or move underneath them. Alright, this should be it. Got it. And that's officially our... Second boss? Is that the second or third boss? I don't, I don't freaking remember. <laughs> we'll find out. This game has so many bosses, they all sort of just blend in together. Ooh. Third boss, apparently. Alright, we're on the fourth level. Um, this level's not too terribly difficult, but this is where... You do get some, uh, platforming, um, sections that can be quite difficult. And, uh, if you notice my score is at 71,000, what I want to do is make sure I get to 100,000. Um, because you get another extra life when you get to 100,000 points, so... A lot of times I just skip some of these enemies because they just they just take time. They add time to the overall experience. So um, realistically, you can just speed through the first part of this level. But what I want to do is kill everything I can to get uh, as many points as I can. I want to get to 100,000 so I can get my free extra life. Which means killing all these guys as well. But that's more so just for survival, because if you run into them, then you can die pretty quickly. You can get knocked off. Obviously, water is bad in this game. If you're familiar with Ghosts and Goblins or the Ghouls and Ghosts series, you know exactly that. Um, pits are bad, water is bad, and yeah. 
Basically anything that's not solid ground is bad in any of those games. And pretty much equates to instant death. Alright, this is probably the trickiest part of this level. This actually took me quite a bit of practice the first time I got to it. Um, you need to try to jump over that floating spike thing when it's at its lowest position, just to make life easier. And I'm going to go ahead and wait for these turtles to come over and try to... Just like that. Again, patience rules all in this game. If I had just jumped straight over, I definitely would have died there, so... And my nose is itching again. Alright, 78,000 points. I'm gonna go ahead and just wait, wait patiently, and just fall down. I don't recommend jumping because you're, you're out of control when you jump. You can barely control your jump when you're jumping, so... The great thing about this weapon is that it's so fast. It's very fast, and again, any shot that doesn't actually connect will loop back around and hit your enemies. Great, shield. That's good. Extra free hit! Although the free hit doesn't do you much good when you fall into some water. But, uh, that's the size of the point. Alright, these spikes up top, some of them you can just jump past, others you have to wait for them to fall before you jump. Like these two right here, you always have to wait. Those mermaids aren't worth very many points, it's like 10 points I think, so... Uh, at first I got to them, I was like, oh, I can just grind them for some points, but... No, that's not actually the case, it's not worth grinding them, you'll kill 10 and only get 100 points. So... Alright, he's going to move over, and these guys are going to jump up. And these are points, 100, 100 points apiece. Again, I don't normally care about points in this game, but... Whoa! Got it. Whew, that was close. <laughs> oh, damn! Well, there goes my shield, which is a shame, but I, at least I still have full health. Nose is still itching, make a song out of it. I, never mind, I tried that in one of my last, I think my Xbox unboxing video. <laughs> Alright, so this guy's gonna basically light the cave, but in actuality, he is evil. He's going to lead you into a trap, also known as the next boss. But uh, you'll use him for now, just to sort of get your way through. And if you do hit him, he, he goes in the direction that you, you hit him in, just like that. So what I like to do is just kind of keep them in front, just so I can see my platforms. You got these little Bigfoot looking little dudes here. And you have to watch out when you when you do kill them. Um, their little uh, clubs will hurt you when they fall down, so don't get hit by the clubs. Alright, we need to go up here first. This is where our fourth tier of Mora is going to be. That's time. These bones do fall down, so watch out for those. Oh, hey, look, shield. Good. Alright, you got these rocks here, and they make these sounds, and when they do that... Um, the flame goes out. Kind of an interesting concept. You gotta get your jumps just right on these sections. It's definitely tricky. So there's our fourth tier. And I will probably get hit coming back here. I don't know if I'm supposed to just... Nope. I still haven't figured out how to get over that one. Ah, and that part two is always damn tricky. I'm probably going to die uh, at this boss. But the big, the big point is getting all the Morris tiers. Because even if you continue a couple times... You have to have them to get the good ending. So even if we continue a few times, guys, I mean, so be it, but... But realistically, I, I do kind of want to not continue, but I know that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> hey, it happened in my uh, PC Engine Super Graphics Ghouls and Ghosts video. I was like, I've never beaten this game without continuing. 
So I'm going to continue. And what do you know, I beat it without continuing. I think I beat it without continuing. Or I might have got to the last level and had to continue. I think I just wasn't expecting to beat it at all. Now we've got this item up here. I have no idea what it does. It's a hidden item. I have no way to use it. Holding down buttons doesn't do anything. I have no freaking idea, so if you guys have played this game before and you, and you have an idea what this item does, please let me know. Let me know how to use it. I have no clue. I'm going to go ahead and just stick with this, uh, this weapon. Alright, so now we got to fight this dude. He's not difficult at all. You just have to do it quickly. He will hurt you if you touch him, though, so don't touch him. I made that mistake on one of my prior playthroughs. And I only had one heart left, and I just jumped right into him. Like, you know, it'll be no problem. I touched, was touching him the whole time in that cave, but... Uh, no. He killed me. So... I had a feeling I'd get hit by that. God! This guy's projectiles are a major pain, and this is my final life, so... Let's hopefully get through this without dying. Again, patience and discipline rules all in this game. Just take your time. If you watch other Let's Plays, you'll notice that the guys, like the best players, will just kind of mosey along, just take their time, take it slow. And that's something I don't always enjoy doing, but realistically, if you want to get through the game without too much trouble, you really have to do that. Got him. Ugh. I think we go to another bonus stage now, so uh, I can at least get another extra life. And I can get another extra life, and that'll be good. Oh, right. Making progress. Making progress. Interlude Mountain Melody, also known as Bonus Stage. Ooh, I might get two extra lives. Yes! I got the extra lives from points, and I got the extra life from playing right on this bonus level, getting uh, 100,000 points. Oh, man. That's a good feeling. Back up to three lives, guys. <laughs> this level's tough, though. This is a tough stage. And this is uh, the one stage in the game that has a, a puzzle aspect to it. And I'll tell you what I, uh, tell you guys what I mean by that once we get to it. But uh, there is a puzzle aspect to get the final Morris tier on this level. There's essentially one tier uh, per per stage. And the question is, which one do I want? Um, I'm gonna go with this guy here because what's cool about this weapon is it goes through uh, solid objects. So you can just kind of sit down here like this. It's not as fast, but it also goes mostly across the screen. Which is extremely useful uh, for one of the bosses here. I'm just going to skip that. I don't think we get any more extra lives for points, so... Now there is a jump power up up here. But we don't really need it, so 
Oh, hey, look, I got it anyway. Cool. I didn't know you could grab it there. I thought you had to actually, uh... <sighs> I thought you had to actually jump up there. Um, just gonna go ahead and skip the fairy flower. We're gonna get a key anyway. Okay, this is actually the screen where the uh, fifth Morris tier is. No! God, why did I do that? God, you see, you notice most of the deaths in this game have just been my total utter fault. And that, that just shouldn't have even happened. Like, why did it happen? Ah. All right, right here you need to hold down and just duck. How you're supposed to figure that out on your own is beyond me. I had to uh, <laughs> go to well, view a walkthrough for that, so. Uh. Here's our key. Now, I think we have to always just go down. There's two paths, and I think you always have to go down. Was that right? That was not right. I guess you have to go up on that first one, and then it's just down, down, down. See, it's down here. Gotta go through this again, which means we've wasted time. Not gonna bother with that guy in the top, because... The treasure chest is just going to be a key. Got it. And so we go up first. Great. And then we're going to have to go down, down, down. I'm going to go ahead and grab that again, just because it's long range and... And go down. Cool. And again, I think we're going to have to go down on this. Yeah, we have to go down on this one because we have the key. So. Yep. Locked door. Go ahead and open the door. And we meet one of our friends from earlier on in the game. And he's pretty much possessed now. So. Kind of creepy when you think about it. You didn't really have to fight any of your own kind and, uh... The Ghosts and Goblins series. It was just you against demons for the whole game. Oops. Alright, now a second guy's gonna come out. He's basically just gonna shoot arrows down. And he's probably the easier of the two. And the weakest of the two. Pretty much every hit just takes a heart off of him, so you can kill him pretty quickly. Oh, man. Alright, so this is the last part of stage five? Yeah. And uh, it's a pretty tough stage. And hopefully I can get through it without uh, much of a problem. Now, you can actually hold down uh, in front of this, but it takes away a health. Uh, oh, I can't even talk. It takes away a heart. Uh, so don't do that. I, I found out about it just the other day, trying it just for fun. And, uh, oh, no, that's invincibility. I want that. Yeah, I missed it. Shit. That would have made life so much easier here. I can still get through it without a problem, I don't think. Or I think, because this level gave me hell when I first got to it. It's so tough. It's really just about shooting those loose bubble zone, because that's what will give you... Um, uh, the biggest problem. Alright, so this boss right here... Let's 
kind of tough. You have to uh, try to hit the bubbles as they come down because they'll just eat through the blocks. And the first time I got to him, all of the blocks on the right-hand side were eaten through. And even though I beat the boss, I couldn't get to the door um, because of how the, uh, the bubbles had fallen. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use my... Just the, the usual uh, lance. Because this is where we fight Mora herself. And I don't know if that stands for like Medusa in Spanish. I have no idea. Because um, I don't speak Spanish. But she's like essentially Medusa from what I can tell. If you're familiar with say like the Castlevania games and stuff like that. And the reason I went back with my lance is because it goes all the way across the screen. And what I like to do is just kind of stay far back for this boss. She does these fireball patterns that are very tricky. Oh, just like that. Hmm. Well, as long as I can tank, it doesn't really matter. That's something to keep in mind when you're playing this game. Got it. Okay, I should be good. I should be good. Should be good. Got it. Right as time's running out. Eight seconds left. Seven seconds left. Got it. Why? Well, this might have been the first time I got here without continuing. Now that I think about it. No, I don't think it's my first time. Might be my first time having three lives, though. Um, that's that's pretty cool. So, so if you don't have Morris Tears, this is where the game would end. You'd get the bad ending, and you'd be like, "What the hell did I do wrong?" <laughs> I went through all the all that trial and error, and all that trouble to get there, and you just end the game on me. What the hell? So. But this is definitely where the game starts to pick up in difficulty. Uh, it's definitely very, very tricky. soda I keep burping now <laughs> uh. I needed to drink something though because I had just woken up not too long ago and uh, so I needed something I should have just drank some water but I figured uh, some calories and some caffeine uh, would have done me well for this video empty calories but <laughs> calories nonetheless some energy all right, this is an extra life up top. We are not going to go for that because it's freaking hard and I don't want to get hit here. This is probably the toughest part in the game for me. Ah, screw it. Why not? Whoa! 
Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> That's the first time I've gotten that. Shit, extra life. Ah, crap. Uh, get this health. Got it! Whoa, success. At getting the extra life. I am happy about that. Whoops, wrong button. Yeah, that had me on my uh, on my toes. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, the sickle again, so I can kill a lot of these enemies a lot faster. All right, let's not get reckless. Let's just not get reckless. Oh, what? Cheap ass. All right, as long as we're in here, we're good because this is like the last sort of Bosch. Oh shit. This is death. Never mind. Is it death? No, it's not death. It's just a guy that's kind of like death. He's, you know, yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna make that. God, I always forget about this stupid boss. And I always get here with no health, and then I have to do it uh, without any power-ups or anything. Very, very tricky pattern, if you ask me. Kind of unconventional. <sighs> no health left. I'm on my last hit. Ah! I felt so good about getting that extra life, too. Alright, so this is the, the last sort of boss, boss rush. Boss? Boss rush. Yes. This is the last boss rush. This is like the last boss rush, and um, you pretty much have to get through this whole thing without uh, dying. Otherwise, you have to go right back to the beginning, and you guys might not be able to tell exactly how far back that is yet, but uh, trust me when I say it's a, it's a good little trek, so... And one of these has a power-up up top. I don't remember where, but... Maybe it's this one. Yeah. Meat! Is that a... Oh, shield! I like that. So very much like uh, Ghosts and Goblins and Ghouls and Ghosts, what the game essentially does is it takes everything you're familiar with uh, uh, in the game and just sort of throws it at you uh, in the shit, in the final stage in terms of like bosses and mini bosses and things like that. Uh, Ghosts and Goblins and Ghouls and Ghosts did the exact same thing, and um, which made the the final stages of those games really interesting because like. That's your first boss right there, but now you gotta fight two of them at once. <laughs> and so it's like... Um, it makes the final stage a little more intense than you would expect it to be, and it's uh, really cool. And it's always a good feeling to me taking down uh, larger enemies... You know, just kinda, kinda easily. Um, Alright, this is gonna be another boss. Familiar boss. Great. Alright, we're actually... No, we're not towards the end yet. I always forget there's a vertical segment towards the end. And... So these guys, you just have to keep pummeling them. They just come straight back, and it's a little tricky, but uh, I'm gonna go for this. I th 
think it's an extra... Nope, just meat. Never mind. <laughs> I thought it was an extra life, but I was wrong. Alright, vertical segment. This is going to be our one and only checkpoint, so... Ugh. This part can be very, very tricky, but as usual, it's just about taking your time. Having the jump boots apparently helps. And the floor does uh, start to crumble away. Ugh, just like that. Which isn't that threatening, and it just kind of makes you lose time. Which can be bad. And ugh, that can be bad too. This is where having the sickle isn't that great. And I kind of wish I had my um, my normal lance by at this point, actually. The sickle was okay on the on the first few moments of this uh, this section, but right now it's making things uh, a lot more tricky. Gah! More falling platforms. So as you guys can tell, if you've never played this game before, it's it's, it's a tough game. It's <laughs> not for the faint of heart, uh, if you ask me. It's definitely a challenging game. Expect to die a lot when you first play it. Expect to die a lot. A lot. Hmm. Ooh, another extra life. Man, this is looking like really good. This is looking really, really good. All right, whoo! Oh man, final stretch, guys. Final stretch. Prepare to die. I think not. <laughs> no, no dying today. Ah, uh, I'm gonna head and grab the shield. God, this level pissed me off so bad the first time I got to it. It's all about knowing the patterns, guys. All about knowing the patterns. I'm not even going to describe the patterns. Just watch. Just watch. I need to focus here. Now it's going to be two at once. Alright, it's looking good. It's looking good. Final boss, guys. Lucifer, I assume? Um, yeah. You sort of have to bait him into his attacks. Otherwise, his attack patterns don't work out in your favor. Just like that. They are not working out in my favor right now. Got him. Hurry up and die. Hurry up and die. Oh shit, I didn't get him. I always forget about the second freaking form. God damn it. Man, that would have been. Ah. Uh, oh shit. Freaking second form. I always. 
Ugh, I always forget about that. Ugh. I'm gonna go with the, uh, the little fairy chick because she'll she'll deal deal some extra damage. As long as I don't get hit, you know the extra damage will definitely be welcome. And I had considered using her the first time I got here, but yeah, it's just one of those things. I, I always try to do uh, safety first, if you will. Ah, oh, safety first, my ass. I'm getting hit. See, I killed those guys a lot faster thanks to uh, having my fairy with me. And so she can definitely take uh, his health off a lot faster as well. Extra life for 200,000 points. Wow. I had no idea it would give me that. I had a feeling that was going to happen. <sighs> Alright, we have four lives to do this, guys. Four lives to do this. And apparently I'm getting points the whole time, too. So... I'm going to go ahead and go with the fairy chick again. Aside from my nose itching... Ugh! I shouldn't have a problem doing this without getting hit. Again, it's just all about timing. We can do this. We can totally do this. Damn it, man. Ugh. Don't want to get to this last uh, form with no health. Got it. Alright, that's basically it, guys. Man, that had me on the edge of my seat the whole time. Ugh. 
And actually, this is the first time I've beaten the game without continuing. I mean, something about these Let's Plays, guys, I tell you. I do things in these Let's Plays that I think I shouldn't be able to do, like... Beat Maldita Castilla without continuing. Whew! Alright. Let's just soak up the good ending. Uh, and, and a one credit clear, apparently, so... Hmm. Man, <laughs> uh, I mean, so there you have it, guys. Maldita Castilla. Again, I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, really cool game, really fun game. Ghosts and Goblins, Ghouls and Ghosts Homage. And really, really difficult, as you guys could tell. And the only reason I got through that the way I did is because I had played it so much in the last two weeks. And, you know, that was probably... Uh, Probably the seventh or eighth time I beat the game, um, and probably the third or fourth of that, which I got the good ending. Um, so, you know, so I've played through the final stage at least three or four times. Uh, probably more like four or five times, now that I think about it. Especially with all the continues and stuff like that I used the first few times. So... And this is where uh, it tells you, like, sort of extra goals you can go for. And let's see what I got here. Enjoy this moment of glory. <laughs> you can be proud of your great play. But are you good enough to become a legend? <laughs> nope, nope, definitely not. Break Zolomer's curse, save the Amatis from the flames. That was the book, the Amatis. Use no continues. Find Jean Raymond's notes. Find the Gamusin people. Uh, find out the what? Be kind. Be kind with the sirens, not the harpies. The sirens. And I think the sirens are. Invoke the Lady of the Lake. How do you do that? That's got to be on the lake stage, the water level. Huh. So I'm gonna have to go up and look at some let's plays or some long plays of this game that managed to get everything, assuming there are they exist, because that's that's a lot of stuff to do without continuing, without dying that many times, and and so forth. Well, I did hit my high score, that's for sure, because this is the first time I beat the game without continuing. And when you continue, you lose your score completely, and you start from zero points, even though you're at say the final stage. So Let's go ahead and see what that final score was, and go ahead and wrap this up. This is kind of a long, long Let's Play for me. 58 minutes! A little over an hour long in terms of the Let's Play, so... Cool. That's my high score, 232,190 points. Can you beat that? <laughs> Probably, if you play really, really well. So... Well, there you have it, guys. Maldita Castilla. 
if I'm saying it right. Um, awesome, awesome game. Um, great game for the Ouya, uh, and it's also on PC. If you know, if you have uh, an IBM PC compatible, check out this game, uh, or Windows-based PC, I should say. Check out this game. Really, really cool. And one of the few really, really great games I've played on the Ouya that's just sucked me in and had me addicted. Again, this is like the seventh or eighth time I've beaten this game. So, and it, you know, every other time I played this, it's taken me over an hour to beat it. Uh, sometimes an hour 45 because I die so many times. So, uh, it's not a short game by any means in terms of these classic action platformers. So, but it's great. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be back with at least one more Ouya Let's Play. And, uh, so stay tuned for that. And then I'll, uh, be getting back on to sort of uh, your regularly scheduled more console oriented programming. Ooh, yeah, it's kind of a console, but it's really just an Android device. <laughs> no card slots, no CD slots on it. So, you know, uh, I like to do, uh, you know, more traditional stuff. Super Nintendo, Genesis, Nuon, yeah, Jaguar, whatever. So, uh, yeah, once I'm done with these Ouya videos, I'll be back with some uh, normal console goodness. So anyway, guys, I'll see you soon, and until then, uh, take care.